to me you are making yourself a hero here. I come there, I fuck your mother. I think it, it, it really wasn't right. And it was uh, inhuman. Long before the coronavirus hit Europe, road transport was already sick. It's plagued by exploitation, human rights abuses, and illegal practices. In recent years, an international team of VNB ITF investigators has been traveling all over Europe, gathering evidence of this exploitation. During this current health crisis, truck drivers have become glorified heroes. They're called essential workers because they continue to work to deliver medicine, protective equipment and food. But in reality, the malpractices of many trucking companies have only become worse. These days, the team needs to be extra creative and vigilant to reach the drivers to make sure that their voices are heard. It's late at night, somewhere on the road in the Netherlands, just before the pandemic spread all over Europe. Our team of investigators are looking for the Ukrainian driver Yevgeny. The time pressure he's under from his employer is such that our team has to chase his truck to be able to interview him. Chauffeurs als Jevgeny die zijn hypermobiel, die zijn vandaag in Amsterdam, morgen in Parijs en de dag daarna in Berlijn. Dus wij gaan dan echt snel te plaatsen om iemand echt, echt te zien, echt te spreken van mens tot mens. We stappen bij een benzinepomp, bij hem in de auto en een uur later nemen we bij een volgende benzinepomp weer afscheid omdat de chauffeur wordt opgejaagd als een baas en eigenlijk niet eens tijd heeft om met ons te praten. Yevgeny is transporting COVID-19 protective suits. He has lived as a hostage in his truck for several months now. His Lithuanian employer doesn't allow him to return home and to make sure Yevgeny doesn't have enough money to travel. In four months, he's only been paid 800 euros, barely enough to eat. If you want to tell us that you have to call us for a week or two, then they say you have to work another job, you have to work another job. But what do you think? Is it going to be exploitation? The problem is that it's difficult to be morally. It's not so much physically, but it's morally. A few hours earlier, Yevgeny was interviewed by the Dutch labor inspection. But instead of offering protection, they ordered him to leave the country as soon as possible. It is toch al overduidelijk dat de mensen uitgebreid worden. Als je ziet dat een visum verlopen is, een werkvergunning is verlopen, geen geldige groene kaart, en dan zegt men gewoon van ja, uh, liefst zo snel mogelijk het land verlaten. Wij kunnen er niks mee. Interne woede. Hello. Artem is from Russia. He drives a Lithuanian truck, but works in and from France. Our team speaks to him over video call. No, in connection with this situation with coronavirus, only for myself, I started to work significantly more at a smaller amount of work. I feel extremely negative because this is, in principle, outside the limits of normal possibilities of a human. То есть в данном случае меня водителя. Это действительно тяжело работать и отдыхать в таких условиях. При и риску подвергнуться заражению. Александр managed to get back to his home country just before the outbreak. He was delivering food products in Western Europe and was away from home for several months, but returned almost empty-handed. This, this is all what is left uh, after 
Это это еще с 4 декабря. This is from the 4th December transfer of the money. Alexander was so desperate for help that he fantasized about what would happen if he ran out of fuel while driving on the motorway. Я все-таки хотел бы, чтобы этот бензин бы закончился вообще на трассе, чтобы я создал какую-то ситуацию, чтобы меня забрала полиция, чтобы она увидела, что у меня нет сертификата на ТАХА, что не ТАХА не откалибрована, машина не пройдена техосмотр, нету страховки, в машине нарушена, нарушен двигатель и выхлопная система. The last straw was when the heating system of his truck broke down in the middle of winter. А машина полностью, да, машина полностью без обогрева, холодно, но ночью, днем, а это уже трое суток и постоянно как на улице ощущения. Но это рабство, как, как себе можно ощущать. Professional drivers in Europe need to have a so-called Code 95 certification. This document confirms their professional qualifications. That abusive companies don't care about road safety is confirmed by Alexander. Мы приехали, никто никакого обучения не получал. Мы отдали деньги 80 евро, и потом буквально через две недели нам только передали код 95. So yeah, this is the official document. Yeah. His employer provided the certificate without his ever having to follow any training. Я себя чувствую так, что попал в непрофессиональную фирму, в фирму мошенник, и она делает все, чтобы мошенничественным путем обмануть и нажить на нас деньги. То есть. Спасибо большое. Спасибо. Спасибо. During the ongoing pandemic. The EU has postponed the renewal of Code 95 certification and all training. But Alexander's story shows in any case that these companies don't take these health and safety measures seriously. If you dare speak up to your employer, you have to face the consequences. We talked to Raris. He's from Romania, employed in Poland but worked for a company in the Netherlands. The company made public statements boasting about supplying free transport to help during the pandemic. But while they were flaunting their good-heartedness, they were cutting the driver's salaries. Raris couldn't stand the hypocrisy. He sent an email to the company asking for the driver's agreed salary. Their response was swift. La două zile am fost înștiințat telefonic, prin care mi s-a dus la cunoștință faptul că sunt dat afară. And, and were your colleagues scared about that, impressed by it, that they kicked you out? Uh, they feel uh, have uh, one sword uh, over the head and uh, at the minimum mistake the sword will cut and the, the head was, uh, was cut. <laughs> A few weeks after interviewing Yevgeny in the Netherlands, our team travels to Ukraine to follow up on his story. Yevgeny and his wife talk to our team in the lobby of a hotel close to his hometown. They explain how he too was forced to drive a truck without heating in the middle of winter. The only way to keep warm was to light a camping gas stove. We were heating the balloon gas stove на ночь оставляли, чтоб горел. С огнем? Ну да. Really with fire? No. А опасно такая, а замерзнуть. Up until the very last moment, Yevgeny tried to act responsibly and do his job correctly. His wife explains how humiliating it felt for them and how it affected the whole family.
In the summer of 2019, we visit Jojo and his Filipino colleagues at their shelter in Warsaw in Poland. It, it's like a dream come true to reach Europe and uh, of course uh, work, actually work in Europe. It's a dream come true. There are eight people living in a confined space. It is all they can afford. So I was asking my salary in order that I can uh, send uh, something to my family and also for my basic uh, needs. But then uh, he said, why are you not driving? You son of bitch, I will fuck your mother. But if you tell me you are not going to Bremerhaven, I will broke your neck. You motherfucker, where you you work? You. Where you work in the Philippines for 100 euro? Here you come here and to me you are making yourself a hero here. I come there, I fuck your mother. The police, they are idiots. They don't care about you. They care only about you, the money. Jojo and his colleagues have just been given official status as victims of human trafficking and are under the protection of the local authorities. In Europe, there are many Filipino drivers like Jojo, working in slum-like conditions, suffering the abuse of their employers. Mr. stated on his SMS that uh, those nine uh, stupid uh, Filipinos, uh, wherever they will run, they, they can't hide from him, and he will even catch them uh, even in the Philippines. Where they will run from me? Where? Now they are hiding in the Netherlands, but in the end they will go to the Philippines. There is no law. There is no authority. Nothing. You pay money and then you have everything. You know that by yourself. Of course, I felt threatened, uh, but uh, it came to my mind that uh, I, should put, I should also protect myself uh, if that happens, and uh, I think it, it, it really wasn't right, and it was uh, inhuman. Hoping that his European dream would become reality, Jojo found a new employer in Romania. And do you know what kind of transport you will do? And where will you work in Romania or in other countries? Uh, basically, sir, uh, we, we were informed that uh, the office is based on Romania, but uh, the, 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 the operations, base of operations in, is in the Netherlands, not in Romania. Unfortunately, matters went from bad to worse. His employer provides shelter, but no salary. For the past two months, he has been surviving on 50 euros. They said that uh, at the moment, uh, they really don't need uh, drivers uh, to continue to uh, be employed uh, in their company. Uh, but, but you are still employed by the company? You still have a working contract? Yes, sir. Uh, we still have a live uh, working uh, contract with our company. And sad to say that uh, I just received 50 euro allowance for food uh, consumption. And uh, I have been trying to uh, ask, beg, the owner of uh, the company uh, for support, uh, especially in terms of food. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, nothing happened. The health crisis caused by the pandemic has exacerbated the already deeply embedded problematic state of workers' rights in road transport. It's time for big brands and multinational companies at the top of these supply chains to take responsibility for how their goods are transported. Drivers like Jojo, Rares, Artem, right. Alexander, Yevgeny, and many others don't want to be glorified as heroes. More than your applause, they need your support for fair, safe, and transparent working conditions.